I want to play this little clip from uh, Gensler, the, the video that he put out after the Kraken action uh, that has been uh, kind of circulating, especially among uh, what you might describe as the Bitcoin maximalists. Uh, I, I want to play this and get your reaction because they are saying that this this validates the view that uh, you know it's it's um, Bitcoin and self custody are the only way to go. Um, so let let's just play this real quick and get your reaction. Crypto, not your keys, not your crypto. You see. You're basically an investor in their platform. If it goes under, and we've seen plenty of that recently, you end up in line in the bankruptcy court. That's why it's so important that these companies and platforms comply with the securities law. There's an so you know it's the point there is that uh, you know Gensler is you know quoting the famous "not your keys, not yeah. not your crypto" line and. That is kind of uh, validating the idea that you really shouldn't even have your your crypto on an exchange. Uh, if, if you want, you know, total security and sovereignty, what do you make of that, Nick? Yeah, I mean, I agree. Obviously, yeah. you know, we invest heavily in startups that help people self custody their coins. So I clearly support that. Crypto only works if people have some self custody, because otherwise, we give all the power back to the intermediaries. And we haven't accomplished anything because then the government can co-opt the intermediaries and, and use them as they will. However, I'm also pragmatic and I recognize that exchanges will exist. There's demand for their services. We can't do everything in a non-custodial way. Um, so there, and there's a whole set of allocators that will need centralized touch points to custody their coins, to trade on them, et cetera. The decentralized infrastructure isn't the totality of the industry and it will never be. So in my view, the challenge is to improve the exchanges that do exist and pressure them to be as accountable as possible, which is why I'm an advocate of proof of reserves, for instance. Regarding like wh whether it validates Bitcoin maximalism, I mean, staking can be done self-custodially. It can be done on your own. Even there's actually you know, services that allow you to stake. If you don't want to stake yourself, you still kind of retain access to your coins but you're relying on a more sophisticated pool that will help you do it, which is not a securities transaction, in my opinion. Kraken may have left themselves open to that allegation in terms of the structure of, I think that is, I'm actually sympathetic to the SEC in that particular instance, hmm. but there's certainly ways to stake, even as a retail individual who's not very sophisticated about the technology or anything, there's ways to outsource that to others, which don't render it a security. So I don't see it as, vindicating Bitcoin maximalism, you know, in, in either direction or, or uh, yeah. So, it, it, you know, staking ultimately will be more decentralized by virtue of the fact that Kraken is out of the business of doing it. Uh, just a comment from Bitcoin Motorist writing in from YouTube saying, I just buy Bitcoin. I don't stake. Should I care about any of this? And I mean, I guess the answer is if you don't own your, if you don't own your keys or you don't have your keys, you should be worried about it regardless of whether or not you're staking, right? I think you should care that the SEC is harassing yeah. the exchanges. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, that may think that they're totally insulated from that. They still have some reliance on an exchange yeah. as an on and off ramp. We do need these touch points with banks and with the you know traditional financial system. We'll always need that. Mm -hmm. We don't have a perfectly peer to peer economy of Bitcoin. That, I'm not even sure that's really possible. So, yeah, I mean, I'm concerned that the SEC is going after the Kraken in particular has been one of the most reputable and successful mm -hmm. exchanges. Um, and, you know, I'd be concerned if they're going after Coinbase, too. Even if you don't mm -hmm. agree with everything Coinbase does or everything Kraken does, we still do need these credible intermediaries. You, you said that you you do have some sympathy for the SEC in, in this particular Kraken case. And, and you also mentioned earlier that, you you know, part of the red flags with FTX for you was that they were offshore. Presumably that the red flag was that they're not complying with U.S. regulation. So, you know, what are the realms that you see regulation being appropriate for the crypto space and where should they just the government just be you know completely hands off yeah great question i mean i don't think that 
um, a no regulation world is is the best because clearly the crypto industry has failed to self regulate. Mm -hmm. I think you could ask exchanges to do proof of reserve. Um, that's mm -hmm. similar in some ways to um, having oversight uh, over. Uh, you know, I, I would say it's actually more of a substitute for a, a really aggressive top down uh, regulatory stance. Um, I think asking exchanges to segregate client and operating capital in an accounting and a, a literal sense um, mm -hmm. is completely the right way. If you look at NYDFS, they had guidance recently that they published asking for that segregation, asking to privilege client deposits in the case of liquidation. I totally agree with that. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make sense for clients of exchanges to be uh, really subordinate junior creditors in the case of uh, bankruptcy. They're, you should have a trust style product um, in the name of the client such that they're insulated in the case of bankruptcy or something like that. Uh, so, you know, those are really common sense things that I think should exist. Yeah. Uh, aside from that, I think, um, you know, I well, other domains where regula regulation is warranted would be a kind of a securities law framework where we allowed to bring token. We were able to bring tokens into concert with securities law through some disclosure framework that was fit for purpose. The way we have a disclosure framework for equities, the things you need to disclose are different. So we will need a revised framework. However, the administration has not Im implied anything or suggested that they might want to do that. So that's more of sort of a wish list item, but I don't think it'll happen anytime soon. This idea of digital cash being you know, one of the fundamental propositions of cryptocurrency. Uh, what is, for people who might be watching this who are curious about cryptocurrency, but they're not steeped in it like you are, could you just make the, the big picture case for why you think this industry is thriving and, or you know, wh why it's grown so much in a relatively short span and what is the like what's the point of it what why is digital the idea of digital cash good and necessary and why is decentralized finance um a, a good thing well there's two main things that um two main trends basically that that crypto people it's a broad tent are fighting against or trying to restore one is there's a sound money contingent so basically believing that we should reinstitute a monetary system that has less discretion and so that's a rebellion against the waves of credit that are created with basically discretionary monetary policy. That's a long discussion, of course. So that's mm -hmm. a big part of it. The second is a push to restore transactional privacy that has been eroded since really the 70s, <clears throat> since finance was digitized. That's and since um, you know intermediaries have been more empowered and there have been a specific number of legal cases especially the third party doctrine that meant that mm -hmm. financial privacy has been uh, effectively eliminated in the US. And a lot of us identify this as a very dangerous trend um, and are trying to push back at it. So DeFi and stable coins uh, and of course Bitcoin are attempts to restore something which we once had, mm -hmm. which was financial autonomy and the freedom to, to transact without asking the state for permission. Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our live conversation with SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce and crypto investor and writer Nick Carter about the government's escalating crackdown on cryptocurrency exchanges like Kraken and the broader DeFi economy. Join me and Nicholas B here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern for more conversations like this and subscribe to Reason's YouTube channel for notifications whenever our videos go live. Thanks for watching.